But God has a vision for your life. Philippians chapter number two talks about how Jesus Christ, he fulfilled his mission. We understand that the mission of Jesus Christ was, was very clear. He came to seek and to save the lost. He came to fulfill his father's uh, purpose. But Philippians chapter two, verses five through 11, talk about how he came about doing that. You know, as, as people, we often understand uh, what to do. We know what we need to do, but how to do it is, is a whole different story. I think about fixing things at, at my, around my house. I, I know there are things in my house right now that need to be fixed. I know what needs to be fixed, but how to do it, that's where I ask YouTube to help me out to find a way. If you have a problem, YouTube can fix it. You have a broken light or a leaky faucet or a, a marriage that, no, anything, anything that you, you know, anything you have a problem, YouTube will help you. It is a beautiful resource. And YouTube has been such a beautiful thing for a lot of people. Why? Because it didn't tell them what to do. It just told them how to do it. They knew what to do, but oftentimes in life, we know what to do, but we just don't know how to do it. And let me say this, that the mindset of Christians must be the mission of Jesus Christ, that the mindset of Christians must be the mission of Jesus Christ. Why do we go through a Vision Sunday? Why do we uh, uh, focus in on what God has for us? Because Jesus had a mission and a purpose for his life, and he wants us to have that same mission and purpose. How do we know this is true? Well, Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5, it says this, having this mind among yourselves. So Paul here speaks to these believers and he simply says to them, listen, you've got to think your mindset has to be what I'm about to tell you. And he goes on in the rest of the chapter to talk about how we should think as believers. We talked last week about the fact that how we think will ultimately change how we live. And if we think a certain way, we're going to live a certain way. That's why we're challenging and encouraging you to grow stronger, to grow healthier, to grow deeper. Why? Because if you change how you think, it will change the way that you live. Why? Because we are called as believers in verse 5 to have the same mind that Christ had in his mission. Our mindset as Christians must be the mission of Jesus. Well, the mission of Jesus is clear. We, we see this in, in Luke chapter 19, verse number 10, for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. This was his mission. That is absolutely clear of why Jesus Christ came to this earth to seek and to save the lost. Now, also is true is that the mission from Jesus is clear. The mission from Jesus to us as a church and as believers is found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18, 19, and 20, where it says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. The mission of Jesus is clear. He came to seek and to save the lost. But the mission from Jesus to us is also absolutely clear that we are supposed to go and reach the lost when, to, when people see them baptized, see them discipled and, and grow. And so we understand what we're supposed to do. And there's a lot of churches that go about fulfilling Jesus's mission a lot of different ways. And I'm not trying to be critical of any church that, that does something a certain way, but we do have to focus in and say, okay, wait a minute. We know what God wants us to do. We know what we're supposed to accomplish. We know how we're supposed to be as a church, but how are we supposed to accomplish what Jesus told us to do? Is there a way to do it? For example, I could go and try to fix a leaky faucet in my home, and there's a lot of wrong ways to do it. Matter of fact, we have something right now, uh, a little issue where the, where the, mi the uh, microwave handle uh, came off. It broke off, uh, you know, just running for that popcorn when it's done to get it, and it broke off. I've tried to fix that microwave handle about four different times. And what I've learned is there are many wrong ways to do it. I've gotten flex seal, I've gotten hot glue, I've tried to just kind of put it on there and just say, just be gentle with it, but it's still, if you go to my house right now, I still have to reach underneath the bottom of my, the microwave and get my fingernails just right and pop it open in order to get my bacon in the morning. I've tried to fix it, but I know what needs to be fixed, but how to go about it, I might need some help after the service if you could help me and point me in the right direction. My wife has just finally given up and said, go get a new microwave. I said, no. 
I am not going to let this handle defeat me and discourage me. I will prevail in the name of Jesus. If the only thing I accomplish in 2022 is fixing the microwave handle, then glory to God, it's been a good year. Praise the Lord. But I'll tell you, I know what to do, but sometimes we're trying to figure out. I think a lot of churches know what to do. But I honestly think that a lot of churches and Christians don't know how to do it. They don't know how to go about. See, I think you know that you need to grow stronger. I think you know you need to grow deeper. I think you know you need to be healthier. You know what to do, but sometimes you struggle with how to do it. Well, in Philippians chapter number five, or excuse me, chapter two, verses five through 11, we see the how connected to the what. And we won't go through the whole message. We'll break it up here over the next couple of weeks. But I want to give you, first of all, we see what is one of the ways, how should we go about it? We see, first of all, the humility of Jesus. The humility of Jesus. Look at verse number six. It says this. It says, have this mind in you, who's also in Christ Jesus, verse six, who thought he was in the form of God. It says, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. Verse seven, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. What happened? He humbled himself. We see the humility of Jesus. How does God want us to go about accomplishing his mission? Can I say this? He wants us to go about accomplishing his mission in a humble way. That we need to be humble when it comes to accomplishing his mission. You see, we have to understand that Jesus was clearly God. Jesus is clearly God. But he humbled himself and became obedient. He emptied himself. He humbled himself. He surrendered to his father's way. He surrendered to his father's will. You see, the humility of Jesus should cause us to surrender completely. See, some of us fight against God. This is what we do. Our whole lives spiritually are us trying to get our own way above God's way and we spend our whole Christian life fighting against God. But honestly, when we look at what Jesus did for us, the humility of Jesus, the fact that though he is God in the flesh, he humbled himself, came down to this earth, was born in a manger, born in a trough, let, let, allowed sinful men to kill him and crucify him. His humility ought to cause us to stop fighting against him. And what we've got to do is we've got to stop fighting against God and say, God, because you were humble, Jesus, because you are humble, then I want to completely surrender myself to you. Why? Surrender is a form of humility. When you humble yourself, you're surrendering. You're giving up your agenda. You're giving up your way. You're giving up your thoughts. You're giving up your wants. And you're surrendering to God. The Bible says in James chapter 4 and verse number 7, it says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. You see, God is calling you as a Christian not to submit to your fears, not to submit to your anxiety, not to surrender to the overwhelming thoughts in your life, not to surrender to the world's culture. God is calling you as a believer to submit first and foremost to God. Why? Because he alone is worthy. The humility of Jesus should cause us to surrender completely to God. And in 2022, one of the best things you could do is just say, God, every part of me, every area of my life it is yours. My finances are yours. My family is yours. My children are yours. My time is yours. I'm submitting myself to God. I promise you that if you submit yourself to God, you'll find yourself in better places. You'll find yourself in different spots. You'll find yourself with different relationships. Why? Because you can't have your way and God's way. You've got to decide, who am I going to submit and surrender to? Here's the question this morning. What do you need to surrender to God? What do you need to surrender to God in your life? What is, I don't know what it is, but there's something in your life that you need to surrender to God. You know, I thought about one of the things I think we all can examine in our life that we need to surrender. I'll tell you this one thing that I think we all, I, when I say it, I think you'd be like, mm, yeah, probably that's, that might be a good one. Because I know for me, it's, it's a good one. <laughs> you know, the one thing that I think we need to surrender sometimes is our expectations. We need to surrender our expectations. We need to surrender to what we think it should be. We need to surrender that to God. We see a story about a man named Naaman in the Bible, in, 
in the book of uh, 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. I love this story. It says, So Naaman came with the horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. Naaman was a man who, who wanted to be cl- cleansed of leprosy. So he went to Elijah. The man of God said, How can I be cleansed? And this is what Elijah told him. He said, Go wash in the Jordan seven times. And then the next verse is what it says. Verse 11, it says, But Naaman was angry and went away saying, behold, here it is, I thought, I thought, I thought. What is he admitting? He's admitting, he's admitting that he wanted to be healed, but he had an expectation of how it was going to be. And he got angry Even though the man of God gave him a way to be healed and to be cleansed of a deadly disease, leprosy, he got angry because he had an expectation. He says, behold, I thought that he would surely come out to meet me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God. This is Naaman's thought. Naaman thought, oh, man, he's going to come out. I'm going to tell him I have leprosy. He's going to come out and say, hear ye, hear ye, may have the attention of the entire city. This man right here who has leprosy is going to be cleansed in three and in two and in one and he's cleansed. And you thought, man, that's perfect. He had this expectation in his mind of how it should go. And he got angry even though God gave him a way to be healed. Even though God gave him the ability to be cleansed of leprosy, his expectation almost kept him from being healed. And what we need in our lives as believers and as people is we need to say, God, I have a way that I think it should go. I have a way that I hope it goes. I have a a, a way that I'm thinking it should turn out. But God, if I let that get in the way, I'm going to miss the miracle that you have for me in my life if I focus it on my expectation. Some of you are praying that God will come through on something. Some of you are hoping that God would do a miracle. But the problem is, is God's waiting for you to surrender the way you think it should happen before he's going to make it happen. And the reason why God hasn't come through on it, maybe is because he's waiting for you to trust him in his way and not say, okay, God, I want this to happen, but if it doesn't happen my way, then I'm not going to be happy with it. Listen, what we need in 2022 is to surrender that word, I thought. Well, I thought my marriage would be different. Well, I thought my kids would respond differently. Well, I thought my job would put me in a better place. Well, I thought, I thought, how many times do we walk around in our lives with those two words that lead our lives, that literally our whole lives are governed by those two thoughts? Why are you here? Why do you do this? Why did this happen? Why, how come that turned out that way? Because I thought. And we have to surrender what we think. We all have this perfect utopian idea of how our life should be. We do. Individually, we do, Right? It can come in small ways and big ways. You know, some of you men, you, you come home from work and, and on your way home, you have these utopian, like, the, these dreams of how you're going to walk into the house. And you're, you know, I'm going to pull up to the house and there's going to be my beautiful wife and kids beaming with joy at the door, anticipating daddy coming home so that they can wait on him hand and foot. And you're going to walk in to the wafts of beautiful roast and carrots and potatoes that has been cooking all day long as your wife, who's beautifully dressed up in perfect makeup and a perfect outfit and her hair is perfect, sits there ready to put your slippers onto your feet and has the easy chair already reclined for you and has football on the television with a cold drink right next to you, ready to serve you hand and foot. And you have this mindset as you're traveling from Haymarket to Leesburg on the way home thinking, oh, it's going to be good when I get home. Oh, I got expectations. My family knows how hard I work. They know all the things I do. I'm sure that they're going to have it all said. And you walk in and there's no slippers. There's no waft. There's screaming. There's yelling. There's toys everywhere. You step on a Lego and almost say a bad word, but you resolve not to say that in 2022. And you go look for the easy chair, but it's not there. And the TV is not on. And your wife is calling down saying, hey, can you get the vacuum? I spilled something. Hey, can you take the trash out before we miss it again the next week? And all of your expectations all of a sudden get thwarted uh, away from what you thought. And then you get upset and you get angry and you, and you say, man, I can't believe I'm not treated right and I'm not, I'm not valued here and I can't believe this is how it is. Why don't you surrender your expectations? And why don't you realize that life usually does not work out the way we thought? And realize that God has a plan for your life that's greater than your expectations. 
Can I just say a few things? I will. I will say a few things this morning. And we walk around, and, and, and this is what we do. We put expectations on everybody else but ourselves. And I can tell you this, the only expectation you should be worried about in your life is the expectations that God has for you. You take care of the expectation God has for you, and you let God take care of everybody else. And you surrender yourself to God. Why? Because Jesus, he fulfilled his mission with what? Humility. It wasn't about him. It was about everybody else. And he said, God, I'm surrendering my expectations to you. You see, what we need this morning is we need humility. You know, some of us put expectations on the church. We walk into church, we kind of do one of these. Well, I thought, and we listen to the sermon. Well, I thought, and we, and we, and we evaluate and we judge. I thought, you know how God is going to allow our church to thrive? is when we stop putting expectations on what we think it should be. Can I tell you, we live in a different era nowadays. There's a lot of, there's a lot of people, I don't, know, I don't know if they ever come back to church. I don't know. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad anybody's here. I'm glad anybody walks into church at this, this point, right? Did you ever think you would have to go to church with a mask on? I never did. Can I, can I, I never did. Did you ever think that you would watch church? You ever watched, two years ago, we watched Easter in my living room with my shorts on. I never thought that. But sometimes what we got to do is we got to realize that God's plan is greater than our plan. And we've got to surrender our expectations, not only in our personal lives and our relationships, but we got to start surrendering our expectations when it comes to God's house. This is God's church. He's doing a great job with it. We've seen more people baptized this year than any other year in the church, any other 10 years combined. We've seen more pe new people come into God's house this year than any other year in the history of the church times 10. We've seen more community outreach. We've reached thousands of people. We, God has blessed us financially. God is doing a work here. It's amazing what God is doing, but I never thought it would be the way that it was. I never thought that I have to pastor and wait three months before I saw the bottom half of some, like, some people's faces because I didn't see, you know, I didn't, I remember a couple times I'd walk in and say, hey, uh, yeah, what do you look like? I don't know your face without a mask on. I remember going to people, hey, how are you? Is your first time here? No, Pastor Steve, I've been here like 17 times. Oh, I just never, I, oh, okay. Wait, do this. Oh, there you are. Right? I didn't know, I didn't know five years ago that this is what, but here we are. And as believers and as a church, you know what we need to continue to do? Just say, God, I surrender what I think to you. I surrender what I think about my life, about others, my relationships. Lord, I just want to be humble like you are humble. How did Jesus accomplish his mission? He humbled himself. It wasn't about him. And if we're going to be a church that continues to see God's work in this place, can I say this? And I'm done. It cannot be about us. It can. It's not about me. It's not about any of us. It's about him and him alone. And so I invite you this year to come along and be a part. If you want to be a part of a church that exalts Jesus, preaches the Bible, and loves the community, this is the place for you. This is the place for you. And I invite you to lean in. I invite you to grow stronger than you've ever grown. I invite you to grow healthier than you've ever grown before. I invite you to grow deeper and make an impact in the lives of other people than you've ever done before. But you can't do any of that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your savior. If you've not begun a relationship with Jesus Christ, and the Bible says that, that you're lost, that you need a savior, that you need to find forgiveness in Jesus, and then you can grow deeper and stronger and healthier. But the first step is following the Lord. And so I want to ask you this morning, this, the simple question is this, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? You're watching online. Do you know that Jesus Christ is your Savior and that you have a relationship with him? The Bible teaches very clearly that we're all sinners, that because of our sin, we're separated from God. But because of Jesus Christ, we can have forgiveness of our sins. 
And I want to invite you in just a moment to pray and ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior if you've never done that and to experience what God has for your life. Can we pray together? Lord, we love you so much.